I am so excited to have Heather Freeman of The Decor Fix on the podcast today. Heather is an interior decorator turned course creator who brings tons of experience and insight that meshes so well into our world as organizers. So today she and I are discussing conflict resolution between our clients and their spouses, as well as some tips that Heather has learned along the way about bringing all of your experiences in your tool belt to the table to give the most value to your client. I know she's going to be a fan favorite and I cannot wait for you to hear her story. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast with Jen Obermeyer. Thank you for joining in. Jen makes it her mission to broaden the horizons of savvy businesswomen in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. She is a devoted business coach and founder of the Inspired Organizer Program. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. And now, let's get started. Heather, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Jen. I am super excited. Yay. Okay, so Heather, you have such an interesting blog and business. So for my audience to know, I actually was doing a little bit of research about you know, working with couples and yeah. um, the challenges that come along with like professional organizers totally. and, um, you know, it's all fine and good when you just have one client to please, but usually there are, you know, multiple stakeholders in a project. And uh-huh. I came across Heather, uh, because she had this fabulous blog post. Um, she's an interior designer and she works with, uh, she often works with couples to mm-hmm. come to an agreement about, about decorating and design. So I was like, hold the phone. I need to invite her on the podcast so we can talk about (laughs) how all of this crosses over because clearly it's all related. So yeah, without me going further into that part, Heather, please tell us um, a little bit about your business and your journey. Yeah. So interestingly enough, I actually started my business back in 2012 part-time and I was doing staging and organizing. Um, And I'm going to go ahead and tell you my terrible, awful, no good, very bad business name. It was... (laughs) Forte interiors, which I thought sounded super cool, but I'm like, Oh God, I think I put music notes on my business card and my logo. Like it was bad. It was, it was really bad, but Oh, that's not uh, bad. Everybody's (laughs) got to start somewhere. (laughs) But I say that because as a recovering perfectionist, like I had to start somewhere. Right. And later that, that morphed into the main heading of my business, which is the decor fix. And a lot of things kind of fall under that. Um, I don't really do as much one-on-one services with clients. I I offer more like um, my programs and my courses, but yeah, let's, let's jump back into that working with couples, man, sometimes I would end up in the client's home and I would suddenly feel like I do not have like my therapist license. I am not qualified to be here, you know, and Amen, you're in moments, right? <laughs> but then you realize like they, your client, they've invited you into their, not just their home, like their sacred space. They've invited you kind of into the weeds of a little bit of conflict in their relationship. So yeah. it's like, well, I'm here, I'm going to show up. And, and I think it's, it's interesting because I found that when I worked with couples, you know, nine times out of 10, it was a a woman who hired me and whether her spouse happened to be a man or a woman, like she initiated the work. But then many, many times I realized I was working for two clients, not one. And so that was an interesting balance. Um, And I found that a lot of times before we ever kind of jumped into what was happening in their space, I had to create a space for conversation to happen. Like they had to feel like they could get it all out. And because I was this kind of third party mediator in a sense, in the beginning, they were okay to have those conversations that I realized they really had been tiptoeing around. Like they hadn't had them yet. And it was happening for the first time with me. Okay. That was incredibly powerful. So let's not step over that. You, you, when you said the words like create a space for that conversation to happen. Yeah. Tell us more about what that looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, so I have also my, in my tool kit, I have 10 years experience as a classroom teacher. And so a lot of what you learn when you're learning about education and helping people move from one place to another, you learn like listening and questioning is so important. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that as business owners and as organizers, we go into homes and we're assessing, like we can kind of see what's going on. Like we can see what's happening, but we always give our clients time for that. But we really, when you sense there's some kind of conflict between the couple, it's super important not to just rush to, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to, you know, the action steps. Um, I'm thinking of an example. Can I share a story about a couple I worked with? Absolutely. Okay. So it's funny because she still refers to me as like her marriage counselor as a joke. She's like, no, no, no. She's really like a designer. That's not what she was. But, um, so I'm going to share this story because I think it demonstrates what we're talking about so well. I had my client who called me and she said, you know, we're struggling with our open concept living dining space, which, which is a very common issue. There's open concept is very common, but people don't know how to arrange furniture and how to utilize the spaces. So I thought, okay, cool. And she, we went ahead and booked like a two hour intensive first meeting. That was our first meeting. So when I went in and I met her husband, it was really clear very quickly that there was conflict around this. He wanted to have a part. There was resentment on both ends. And so I kind of moved us to the dining table to sit, you know, I did an initial walk around and then we kind of, we kind of sat for a bit and started talking about things. But what, what I realized was happening as I kind of was questioning where some of the issues were, the conflict wasn't about their room itself. Mm. Like they both wanted the same outcome. They wanted this room that worked for their family, but the conflict was about the route to get there. So what was happening, and she had kind of alluded to this in her, like in the intake process and in her emails about her husband. And so I kind of knew like, hey, there's something there. But um, what was happening is he kept buying all these things and putting them in the space. And she was really frustrated because she didn't like it. She freaking hated the pieces, you know? And mm -hmm. at one point she's like, looking at the stuff he brings in and she's like, Oh hell no, that's not staying in my house, you know, yeah. <laughs> but he feels really good about it. And so this has happened a dozen times, two dozen times. And what we realized at the end of that session is like, he wanted the progress. So he was buying all the things, oh, but she wanted input. She wanted her style to come through. And that's where the real issue was. That was it. So if we had rushed through for me to be like, well, here's where you should move your couch and here's what paint colors and light fixtures. If we had skipped all that, we would have totally missed solving their actual problem, which was just miscommunication around the goal. And so that, I think that's, that's next level stuff when we can give that to our clients. I completely agree. Could not agree more. Okay. So what it sounds like, and I feel like we're kind of like, opening up this brand new conversation that I've never really had with anybody this in depth before is like you were, you, you mentioned in your toolkit. And I think that that's kind of one of the takeaways I want to make sure people have today is mm -hmm. not just, not just being aware that there are deeper problems, because I think when you're working as an organizer, you kind of know, yeah. <laughs> like it's not really just about this stuff. So yeah. it's not just an awareness of, of, um, of, yeah, sure. Like everybody's got like emotional attachments and different desires for their home and everything, but having some of the tools of, mm -hmm. like you said, active listening, powerful mm -hmm. questions about, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think of what you were describing, you know, sitting them down at the table and making sure that both of them felt heard. Yeah. Um, is, is kind of what makes up like when we, when you mentioned, how did you create the space for that communication to happen? And, and I'm sure that, you know, thinking back all the way to that very first day that you sat down with both of them and recognized both of their needs, that that is why they ended up loving you so much and calling you like the marriage counselor, <laughs> because, you know, it's like the, the form of wanting to decorate a room or work with an interior designer to, you know, figure out this space. It, it is just sort of like a vehicle for, um, some of those so those deeper needs to come out, I oh, think. Totally, totally. And there's, there oftentimes for our clients, always really for people who are hiring us, there is a source of stress in their home. Like something in their home is stressing them out. And typically that stress is bleeding over into relationships. Like it just happens. And so we, I don't, I feel like we almost need to recognize the work that we're doing when we help people with the physical things in their home, it is so impactful. And I think that can even help us when you maybe, you know, when you're new in business, some people have those issues about what to charge and are they worth that? 
oh my gosh, like, yes, yeah. we're worth it. When we realize like, <laughs> hey, this is going to improve your marriage or your relationship with your kids, then like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to charge what wow. I'm worth because that's powerful stuff. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And I think sometimes when we walk into our clients' homes, you know, we're the fixers. We, we, we feel that they are hiring us to fix the problems. And in a sense, they are. But if we really want to help empower our clients to make lasting change, um, we have to kind of sit with things. We have to allow them to kind of sit with the discomfort of that conflict for just a little bit before rushing through it. Because, um, you know, again, when, when you're in someone's home and you sense the conflict and stuff comes up, like, it may be that some of our own discomfort around things might lead us to rush past it, but we just miss that opportunity because that's when we really connect with our clients because it is so easy for us to be like, okay, now that we know what the real problem is, I can, here's the action steps and the mm. action steps are going to be aligned with the real conflict. But if I don't totally get down to the root of what's actually happening, whether you're working with you know, couples or even just one client, I think that we, we just miss an opportunity there for deeper work. Gosh. Okay. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I love what you said about us wanting to avoid it. And so we just act like, Hey, this is just about the project and the project plan. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's safe, right. That's safe. Yeah. Let's, no, let's talk about the baskets and the bins and the label. <laughs> oh my gosh. You really hit the nail on the head. So Heather, let me ask you about this. Let me ask you about this scenario because um, you know, like, it sounds like your, your business has really evolved and you did start out, um, working with people one-on-one -on -one to yeah. declutter and to organize and to stage and to decorate and all this, you know, one of the common issues, I guess, you know, that, that people, uh, as organizers worry about or come across is when the wife, like you described, like, you know, usually it's like the woman who sort of initiates or mm -hmm. potentially even hires you to come in and mm -hmm. either one of two things. One is either that um, the husband or her spouse does not even agree with her decision to hire an organizer. Oh, yeah. Can we dive into that just a tiny bit? Oh, man. Yeah. And whew, that, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah. And especially when your client kind of tells you that, so you know, that can feel like a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think one thing that I've been able to encourage my clients to say, you know what, it, even if they're not on board, even if they're not on board right now, once they see your stress level go down, once they see the actual physical results of the work we're doing, they're going to jump on board, you mm -hmm. know, because mm -hmm. I've had, a, I mean, a ton of hesitant spouses who later, like you can even sense their tone is different than the next time the client calls you, right? The next season or the next project. And all of a sudden you realize like, oh, he converted like, or he or she converted. Now they get it. Now they get the value. But I think part of that is we almost have to just encourage our client like, hey, their negative feelings about this can't dissuade you from what you know in your gut is right. Like we got to tackle mm. this stuff. You need mm. help. You can't do it on your own. And that's what I'm here for to help you through that. And just know that when the benefits start to come in, they're going to get on board, but it may just, it may take a while. So, you know, don't let that dissuade you from your commitment to do this because we're going to do this. And, and eventually everyone in your family is going to benefit. Mm. I completely agree with your way of approaching that. I do have a heart though for the, the fact that there are, I think, you know, plenty, plenty, and, and maybe I won't pin this all on like, women necessarily like, but maybe like there's one member of a couple who is ready and willing to invest and totally. make those changes, totally. but, um, and who, and who, who they, they believe in what you're saying and they want to yeah. go along with it, but they yeah. won't go ahead and make that financial decision without mm -hmm. the spouse agreeing. So it's like, they never get the opportunity to really see the potential benefit because yeah. they're like that the spouse needs to kind of buy in before any of the changes happen. And that's one of the really heartbreaking things is because I really feel like, you know, when I hear about husbands who say to the wife, like, really, you can't get yourself organized mm -hmm. Ugh, that like that, that's yeah. like this, that's like this really <sighs> like a dagger. It's like, I wish I could solve that for yeah. the people out there who are in that scenario. And I think from just that little bit, we could go a whole different direction, here. I know. <laughs> but, but I will just, I, I will say this in working with my clients, working with now students in my programs, having to help people get past the mindset of like, 
we are living in the 21st century. And a lot of us as women, we are operating our mom lives and our home lives the same way that our moms did in the eighties or the nineties. And it's like, we live in a very different world. And just because mm -hmm. our moms did it, or we felt like they did it and they did it all so easily and effortlessly. And then we're like, why can't I get it together? Like you said, why can't yeah. I organize? We've got to realize like, you know what? We got to utilize the collective wisdom of the women who have come before us, who have done what we want to do, utilize technology, utilize all the things mm -hmm. so we can make time for what matters most and realize like we got to do it without the guilt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think we just automatically, there's so much guilt around maybe even hiring. I have felt that from clients hiring me when I started as an organizer and then even as decorating, like, I'm just no good at this. I don't know why I can't. And yeah. maybe part of, maybe, I mean, this, I've never really thought about this, Jen, but maybe part of what we have to do with our clients is just to be like, Hey, there is absolutely no shame in this. Like, thank goodness people like you need my help. Cause I wouldn't have a job, you know, and thank goodness right. people who are dental hygienists, thank goodness there's cavities. Cause they wouldn't have a job. I don't know. Exa but yeah. I, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I do. I, I sense that there's still, um, there's a, I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth and understanding in that area. And even when yeah. it comes down to something like decorating, um, you know, how often do you feel like you do get hired in the end because the one of the members of a couple like doesn't feel comfortable speaking up for themselves. And so they're just like, well, we'll hire this person. Oh, so oh, I don't totally. have to have, have that. I don't right. like, I can kind of like pin it on them or like, uh -huh. does that make sense? Yes. Oh, and I've even had clients say, okay, can you tell him that? Or can you tell her that? Yeah. that you like? And it's like, yeah, actually I can. I mean, because that's the better design choice. That's the better choice for your family, for your home, for your budget, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes it is that I am the safe space and with the professional knowledge to say like, you know what, that's just not best. And here's why. Mm -hmm. And you know, one partner who hired me may not be able to articulate that's not the way we go, but they don't know why, but I can say, Oh, and here's why because of X, Y, and Z. And from my experience, X, Y, and Z. And so it does take away some of the, some of what, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And, in, and in that sense, that makes sense that you're in that kind of spot as, as a mediator, as a problem solver, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. So let's tie this in with, because I think this is a, a really a perfect opportunity to talk about you know, the organizers who kind of feel like they didn't, they, they weren't able to, uh, you know, sell a client or they weren't able to convince a client because, you know, like, oh, well, her husband thinks she ought to do it. And maybe she really kind of thinks she ought to do it mm -hmm. on her own. So mm -hmm. we have the opportunity as organizers or decorators or anything to offer sort of like a consulting or DIY sort of package as That's sort cool. of that mid mid range or lower cost solution instead right. of, you know, ha you know, making people feel like, well, if you don't hire a professional to come do it for you, then, you know, you're screwed. Right. So how have you kind of filled that gap in your own business um, yeah. by offering them like kind of like a, okay, here's another way to go about this with professional opinion. Right. So I really started in on online courses and then with one of my programs, I offered coaching one-on-one -on -one and then group coaching. And that still cost way less than if someone was to hire me to come in and organize their entire home. So awesome. my program that I recently launched is Simply Streamlined Home. And so it's really geared for busy moms to help them go through the decluttering process and time banking organization techniques that are based on efficiency and not just on aesthetics and then kind of helping them be intentional about home life. And I walk them through how to declutter and sort and organize all these areas of their home. But and, and, you know, there's no way I could do that with one client for the lower price that I'm offering <laughs> through the program, totally. but I'm offering that like support. And some of my coaching sessions with my students have been absolutely amazing because in my mind, the, I am so comfortable going into someone's home and knowing I can make a huge difference in their life. Like mm -hmm. I have no doubt, but when I was kind of offering these online courses and programs, I'm like, are they going to get the same results? I'm not in their home. And boy, I kind of had to wake up and be like, oh yeah, they can. And they did. And maybe what the heck were you doing? Because they, <laughs> they have your guidance and your method and they can do it. And it was more about empowering. And that's when I was like, whoa, okay. So I really like to be that empowering activator mm. more than the hands-on here I am with you doing it. And I realized as my background as a teacher kind of came in and I'm like, Oh, duh, why didn't I see this before? So, but yeah. Um, and then my, the bookshelf styling class, 
I actually kind of did that on the side, like four years ago when I was neck deep in like full-time design. I, I came up with this class about styling bookshelves because I realized a lot of my clients, this is an area they struggled in. And I was like, gosh, why can't they do this? And then I even had designers who would hire me to come style. I'm like, you, you can do like all these architectural renderings and you can't style a bookshelf. Like what the crap? But I realized like people couldn't, couldn't do that. That was a skill they were lacking. So when I put my method together and I put it in a class, I just, I didn't realize like how powerful that can be for people to have those tools in their tool belt and learn that skill that they can use. So kind of, I like talking about business cause I don't ever get to do that. I'm usually just talking about home and not with other business owners. So it's kind yeah. of fun to, to talk about that with you, but um, yeah. And it turned out that that little side side business or side revenue that I thought was just supplemental. Like that's where my business is going now. That's what I'm doing. So that feels exciting. That's so interesting because <laughs> that's exactly how my online business started too. Is like, Oh, I'll just make this little course. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I'll just see. I was like, Oh, maybe like a few people sign up. Now it is my entire business yeah. entirely. Yeah, um, cool. so, awesome. so that is funny how, you know, something small can really lead to something big. Tell mm -hmm. me or tell our listeners. Okay. So our, our audience is all professional organizers yeah. you know, in all stages of business. Some of them are really interested in the idea of creating a product, but it's something that you said, um, you know, a few minutes ago really caught my ear where you said you had a fear of well, people won't get the same results. Right. Doing it like, you know, in a course form or like with videos and like, how did you approach that? Like in, in terms of, you know, my assumption when you're talking about like, for example, your bookshelf styling class, like tell people how this works. Like, did you literally create videos of yourself styling yeah. bookshelves? Yeah. And, um, so with that, with styling bookshelves, and it's funny because I, bookshelves are an area that as an organizer, people kind of ask me for help with. And so mm -hmm. I was doing that way before I dived more into like the full design of it. Um, and I realized I had come up with like this method that worked and, and I used it as a kind of a system anytime I would work with clients. And so it was a really easy upsell for me as an organizer to just say, Hey, um, I can help you with styling. Cause I had other clients ask me. So I knew that that was an area I could, I could work and I could help with. But so what I did was, um, I, I created, it's like four video lessons and there's action steps. And I tell you like what components you need for your shelf and how do you approach it? And what do you do if X, Y, Z, how do you make it functional and beautiful? So I recorded these video lessons. I've got like the workbook and all of that attached so that it's basically you're learning a process that you can repeat over and over again. So what's, and, and to be honest, what's interesting is at, if organizers could realize like they are natural stylists. Yeah. And oh, was, I totally agree. You know what I mean? I know a lot of your audience is probably already offering that, but if you're not offering that, oh my gosh, it is a gold mine of untapped money and the upsell because the easiest client is a client you've already landed. Right. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes maybe there's a little bit of insecurity. I think I kind of got For off sure. on the rabbit trail, Jen. I'm sorry. I'm, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wind back there. <laughs> I love all of this. And, and too, like, I mean, let me tell you, there's, there's people in my audience who don't even know exactly what you mean when you say upsell. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. And so, it's so yeah. exciting. I know. Yes. Oh, fun. I'm like rubbing my hands together. Goody, goody. Okay. So when you finished with your client, I think we always need to think about nurturing that relationship with them so mm -hmm. that we are their go-to person for any other organizing need that they may have. But when an upsell is just an easy yes for our client to add on a service where we can help them better. So when the job, the organizing job is done, you know, think yeah. about like what part of that room would help them enjoy it more. And organizers like, okay, let me be clear too. When I say styling, I don't mean decorating. I don't mean design. I'm not talking about like picking paint colors or light fixtures or any of that jazz. Mm -hmm. Styling is just one little aspect of decorating where we arrange objects in a pleasing way. So because your organizers, like you already know aesthetically what looks good yeah. way more than the average person, more than your client. So that's a skill that if you could put in your tool belt, a simple styling skill and just say, Hey, you know, I noticed that your bookshelves, we've got some things organized here, but what if we did this? What if we did that? And we said, you know, I can come back and work with you and we can pull some things together that and your clients like, Oh yeah, 
I need help with that. Oh, for yeah. sure. I already love you. I trust you. I know you. You've been in my house. Come on back. Let me give you my money. Let me open my wallet. You know, it's an easy yes. That's what the upsell is for them. I that think. is awesome. And I could not have said it better because once you have built trust with somebody, it's like, really, are you just going to walk away and say, bye, like, good luck. Yeah. You know, I'm always talking to people about, you know, just maintaining the work that you did is an yeah. upsell, you know, totally. as like a maintenance sort of package. But uh -huh. for those girl, you know, for those women out there who are, who do kind of have that design eye and that styling, like how do yeah. I, you know, how do I work in, um, styling or staging skills without yes. when, like when they're not moving, like, how do I do that? And I mean, I think that what you, uh, just shared is going to like, you know, turn on a whole bunch of light bulbs for a whole bunch of people out there. Oh, so. yeah. Thank and you, you think about when holidays come up, holiday styling, for sure. um, helping with kids' birthdays. I mean, there's so many different things. And you may not, I think it's important too for us to focus on what we want. You know, we don't want to go everywhere in our business. But if styling feels like something, like you love to do it in your own home, and it feels like a natural fit, and you've always felt good at it, that totally makes sense to dive right into that and add that on as a piece. So amazing. Okay. So you said you don't get to talk about business as much. So let me ask you a couple more business questions, Heather. I asked you, um, before we came on today, what is one thing that you wish you could tell yourself when you started your business? Oh yeah. Can you share what that would be? Oh, for sure. And I mean, who, if I could go back one, I would tell myself to pick a better business name. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> you really didn't like um, that one. I'm so I sorry. Really, I'm so yeah, sorry. I, need to, I need to work through the shame on that. No, <laughs> I, uh, I should have, I would say invest in your learning, like mm -hmm. invest in your learning. I totally just wanted to DIY everything. I Googled everything. I read all the books. I got, I mean, I got on everyone's email list, every single free, there was a new freebie opt-in coming to my mailbox like every day, you know, yeah, yeah. and so you have all these different theories and methods and you're trying to piece it all together. So you're totally scattered. And I just cannot emphasize how important it is early in your career to like truly get professional development to accelerate what you're doing. Because I mean, oh my God, what you're doing, if I could have done what you like, what you offer for business owners six years ago. Holy cow. I mean, and I've heard some of your student testimonials, so I know like they're getting amazing results, but like find somebody, you know, in business who's doing what you want to do and just go learn from them. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. don't have to waste the time. I know so that's what I would tell myself. I totally agree with you. And at, even at this stage in my business, I am still looking for those people and those mentors. Yeah. Um, it's not like, you know, one and done, like, Oh, I bought a few courses mm -hmm. and now I know everything I need to know. I mean, yeah. I think that that is one of the best ways that I can continue to serve my audience. And I'm totally got like preacher hands going right now. <laughs> one of the best ways that I can continue to serve my audience is in investing in myself. So they're not just getting what I knew five years ago and oh, learned absolutely. five years ago. They're getting all of the stuff that has been poured into me by people much smarter yeah. than me. And I feel oh, man. so strongly about that, that it's like, what, you know, not to like <clears throat> pat myself on the back and say, why would you not invest in my program? But you know, that's part of the value Absolutely. of, of investing, you know, like, like you said, learning, learning new skills that can be easily added onto your existing business. Like you mentioned the bookshelf styling class, like that's so, so, so smart, you know, and there's people out there who have poured their time and energy into creating these resources. And it's like, they're a no brainer. Absolutely. I'm going to give you an amen for the preacher hands because thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No. And I don't think I'd ever heard it articulated quite that way. Like when I never I, said it like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> when I hire a coach or a business mentor, I'm not just getting what they're giving me. I'm getting all the years and thousands of dollars they invested for their own development. For sure. It's like lifelong learning. I love that. For awesome. sure. And I'm not too shy to tell people like I reinvest, you know, a lot um, back into my business because mm -hmm. I consider, you know, my own learning, I guess one, it's just a passion for me, but also yeah. I know that that's the way that I can be, um, you know, be a great coach and be, you know, really serving people to, to the best of my ability. Yeah, absolutely. Truth time. Did I catch you multitasking? Chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you're the type of gal that loves efficient ways to learn and stay inspired in business. Please screenshot this episode right now, post it on your Instagram story and tag me at ProOrganizer Studio. 
tell me and your audience that you're listening in and together we'll make pro organizers everywhere more savvy and productive every week. Um, so tell us like, okay, what does your business look like today? And just kind of tell us again, like, so you're, you are all online now. I know you said that you have, um, group coaching. Like, is that typically about, um, you know, organizing and decorating? Do you separate the two? Do you combine them together? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. So it's interesting you ask that because I'm finding that kind of the big umbrella for my business and the work that I want to do, it's intentional home. And I've just realized Mm -hmm. like, I do know how to style and decorate and I have this knowledge I can give to people through my course that I created. I don't offer coaching in that realm anymore. I don't offer coaching in like the decorating realm anymore. Um, I have, you know, people that I refer to. And again, my course that teach some of that, but, um, intentional home to me is a lot about like the struggle that as working moms we go through. And so in my program, simply streamlined home, where we really talk about decluttering and efficiency tactics and time banking and being the CEO of your own home. Like mm, that's I, love where that. I offer my clients coaching because I found that that's where they need more one-on-one support. Um, and whether that's in a group or one-on-one is an option for them. I found that there's a lot of mindset stuff there. And so with decorating, a lot of times it's knowledge. They just need knowledge of what, how do you pick a color scheme? How do you, you know, put together a floor plan? But when we're talking about major change in our homes, which is what organizers are doing, you're not just organizing the stuff. You're creating systems and routines and all those things. You're helping your client to do those there's a lot of mindset stuff. And so the work that we do, I think is important. And so in my business right now, I have these two programs, the one that's decorating that doesn't come with the coaching, the one that is focused on streamlining that does come with the coaching. Nice. Okay. I really, really love that. Um, I want to take your decorating course just because (laughs) you know why? (laughs) And again, this is the mindset that I see when I, when I invest in a program It's like, it's not that I couldn't do it myself. Like if I want, I mean, I'm a Googler, like I can learn stuff on YouTube, like, and I know kind of the basics of like what has to happen, even down to some of the conversations that I know I need to have with my husband. Like I could make you a list, but (laughs) if I were to like have, if I have a program that can kind of like walk me through the steps, it's going to not only give me structure of like how to approach it, but also just the, uh, just the fact that, you know, I paid something for it and now I want to hold myself accountable for actually mm-hmm. getting it done and to just like stop mm-hmm. talking about it. Yeah. Um, it's huge. It's it huge. Is. And what you said about like, you're paying for not just the coaching or the mentorship or the course or the class. Like I have styled hundreds and hundreds of stinking bookshelves. And so you're gleaning like, Hey, I'm going to fast track. I can style a shelf yeah. just as good as Heather. Cause she taught me awesome. what she learned. Same with you and what you're offering your students. So yeah, yeah, I love it. That's so good. That's so good. I love, I love what you just said about being on the fast track too, because I, I work one-on-one with a lot of organizers who have ideas about courses that they want to create and like online yeah. programs. Um, but, but I think that they're kind of like, you know, why, why would somebody, why would somebody buy a program versus just reading it on Pinterest or like looking it up on YouTube? Mm -hmm. And there's something so specific about when somebody has put together a program that you pay for Mm -hmm. versus, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) you trying to like piece together things from everywhere. Like you said earlier. Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm so glad you said that because one of my students who's like, I call her my rock star student because she's just amazing. She's in like all my test and best testimonials. Cause she got so much, her like life changed after she took my program. She's like, I think this saved my marriage, all these things. Wow. And I'm that's awesome. Crying on her coaching session. But what she, she did not buy easily because she sent me some emails and you know, you always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Well, she had lots. And one of the questions was, how is taking your course different than me reading a book? I've read Marie Kondo. I've done all the, and I was like, okay, okay. And what I was able to articulate just by her asking me the question is say, yeah, but a book isn't going to walk you through room by room in your house and tell you exactly what to do. They're not going to give you an action step. They're not going to help you reflect and think about where the true issue is. They're not going to give you all these frameworks to use to where, like you said, you have a process to follow, you get faster results and that's the difference between a program and a book. And I, I did think of something as you were saying that who would, who would buy a course. And I think that for me, when I was thinking about, I know how to work with clients one-on-one. I know how to serve them. Why would anyone buy my course for the same thing? 
it's different people. Like it is. Yes. It's a different client. Your clients who need you in your home, they're not going to get out of a course the same thing as you because they need the hand holding. Yep. But there's a whole like slew of people online all over the world who don't want to hire someone to come in their home. They want to learn how to do it themselves. So if we view it as like, this really is, it's almost like it's two different kind of clients. Completely. It is you that I could not agree more. Um, and also, you know, something that you're always positioning too, is you're, you're showing the value. This is something I tell to the organizers who are working on their end programs. Um, like, you, you know, not like yours. I mean, there's a million different things to organize. So there's a million different potential course ideas oh, out totally. there. You're always framing the value against, um, uh, what it would cost for them to work with an organizer, Uh huh. you know, so, so the, it is, it is time saving. It is a cost savings. And, you know, there are a lot of people who do completely value professional advice. They just don't necessarily, you know, can't lay out the cost to have somebody come yeah. do the decorating in their own home. Totally. Um, and they're just like, yeah, I, I think I could do this if I had the right guidance and the right structure and mm-hmm. the accountability and the sequencing of events, which is huge when you're talking oh, yeah. about something home related, whether it's decor or organizing. Uh-huh. Absolutely. <laughs> Heather, what I can tell about you is that you, um, you do have that trait of just being willing to give and to serve people where they are wherever you are and with whatever, you know, experience that you have had. I love that you didn't wait until you were like, you know, a worldwide known guru like Marie Kondo or had (laughs) had like, you know, 25 years of experience in the business. Like you just jumped in and made it happen and offered this for people. And now you've got people who are saying that you saved their marriage. Yeah. And, and I think, man, there's so much doubt when we become business owners, I realize like I'm a confident person. And then when I jumped into business, it was like, whew, huge confidence hit, huge imposter syndrome, all the things we have to go through. Mm-hmm. But I just think the thing we have to tell ourselves, and it gets easier, like years in, as you tell yourself, like, if not me, then who? I can do this. Totally. I can help people. I, and I have a certain, you know, what makes me, me is going to speak to somebody that maybe wouldn't Marie Kondo wouldn't necessarily float the boat, you know? Sure. So if yeah. we look at it as like, we are going to attract people to us that are like-minded, like, like attracts, like we're going to attract people to us that are kind of in that same mode of operating in a sense. And so we have something to give them and maybe we're the only one who'll say it in a way they can listen. And that can give us confidence. You know, even if our audience is small, even if you got like big old huge goals for your business, if you just show up and serve those people who are in your radar right now and give them a hundred percent, it is just a natural byproduct that your business is going to grow. You serve and it's going to grow like no question. Well, Heather, you are, I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud to know you. Um, and I just really appreciate you, you, you know, giving people again, that takeaway that I always want people to have is you don't have to be, don't, like perfectionism works against you. Oh, yes, totally. Waiting is a killer. So, okay, Heather, please tell everybody where they can find you online because now I know you have like a whole new set of raving fans. Um, and we're so glad that you came on the show today. Awesome. Okay. So my dot com is the decor fix.com. You can find me on Instagram at the decor fix at the decor fix. So pretty simple. And, um, yeah, I'd love to connect with anybody who is on the call. I think it's super fun. I think that as business owners and women, like, you know, they, what is it? They say a rising tide lifts all boats, but That's it's right. so true. So I have totally enjoyed this conversation and now, you know, I feel like we got to do it again. I was just about to say the same thing. I know, Heather, we will have people requesting you to come back on. Thank you so much for sharing your story today. And again, guys, go check out her stuff. Like the styling, the bookshelf styling workshop sounds like something every organizer needs um, and, and wants. So, so go, go check that out just to like, you know, learn from her and see how she's doing all this stuff. It sounds so amazing. So Heather, we will talk to you again soon. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for listening to the Pro Organizer Studio Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about time-saving services and resources for professional organizers, visit www.proorganizerstudio.com. And if you'd like to get Jen's roadmap to success for launching and growing your professional organizing business, go straight to www.poroadmap.com.